In case you haven't been paying attention, I've been doing a multi-part series on the history of string theory and all of our understanding of it. I started a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, it's been a while, with the motivation for string theory, how we need a unification of physics, how we have unexplained problems with the standard model and how it doesn't fit with general relativity. And I explored how string theory started out in the 1960s as an attempt to explain the strong nuclear force. Failed pretty hard at that, but hey, give it a pass. And then lately, we've explored this concept of extra dimensions that are all tiny and curled up so that as you move around in the three-dimensional world, you're actually circumnavigating these tiny curled up extra dimensional extra dimensions many, 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 many times. And then we took it one step further with this concept of supersymmetry, which allowed us to connect these two great branches of reality, the force carriers called the bosons and the building blocks called the fermions, which look in com completely different, behave different, act different, smell different, are, might actually be unified through a concept called supersymmetry. And all these ingredients woven together give us our modern string theory, which really got going in the 1970s and into the 80s. But there's one thing missing. There's one thing that I haven't talked about yet in the development of string theory, and that's gravity. See, string theory was originally developed to understand the strong force and expanded to try to include the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, and then through supersymmetry, explain electrons and quarks and neutrinos and all the rest. But gravity still wasn't in that description. And one of the most powerful things about string theory wasn't discovered until years into its development, over a decade into its development. And this key ingredient, gravity, is what has given string theory its staying power over the decades. Because string theory isn't done. We don't have a string theory. We don't know what string theory actually is. We just have approximations and guesses and some mathematical techniques that try to get a hint of what's really going on, but we don't really know what's going on when it comes to string theory. These, this idea, this hypothetical idea, this I, an idea that really wouldn't work or doesn't work or doesn't have a final answer, it wouldn't have lasted more than a few years if it weren't for the discovery of gravity inside of string theory. And the most powerful part of string theory is that it naturally includes gravity in its mathematics. And it includes gravity automatically because when you look at strings, even in our approximation methods, our hazy, murky ways of trying to probe the nature of string theory, you find pretty generically, regardless of how you try to construct string theory or what kind of approximations you, you take, you find a particular kind of particle. And this particle has certain special properties. It's massless, and it has spin two. Now, spin is this fundamental aspect of all quantum particles, all subatomic particles. Uh, an electron has a spin half, a photon has spin one. Uh, but here's a particle that's massless. It's a boson, and it has spin two. It has twice as much spin as the photon. If you're wondering what does that mean, does it spin around twice as much, just don't worry about it. Just know that it has this quantum value that's twice as much as that of a photon. That's all you really need to care about. In this kind of particle, a spin to massless boson has a name, the graviton. The graviton is thought to be the quantum particle of gravity. Now, gravity does not have a quantum description. We tried it. We tried to put 
quantum mechanics inside of gravity and it fell apart hard. And that is like the big problem is that we have our theories of quantum dynamics and quantum fields for the three forces in nature. And we have our theory of gravity through general relativity and they can't get along. But here's string theory, which is a quantum theory of the universe automatically including gravity. It's already there. It's already baked in. It was there all along and, and we didn't even know it until we saw it. So we don't have to add gravity into string theory. String theory just comes along with gravity. This is a very powerful concept and it happened right in the mid 70s and was fleshed out more into the mid 80s. And this is why everyone got so excited by string theory, because here you have a single framework, a single physical you know, construction, even if it's just approximate, but a single idea. And all the forces of nature are explained by tiny little vibrating strings. And all the building blocks of nature are also explained by tiny little vibrating strings. And so is gravity explained by tiny little vibrating strings. So everything we see in the universe can potentially be explained by tiny little vibrating springs. Strings. That's a powerful idea. That's a potentially elegant solution to all the questions we might have in modern physics. As the 80s wore on and went into the 90s, this idea was as awesome as it sounds, wasn't looking so hot. And that's the reason is because in the early 90s, we didn't have one formulation of string theory. We had five. We had five different theories that all claimed to be the string theory. It's a little bit awkward if your theory of everything that explains all the stuff in the universe and you have five of them and they all look very, very different. How are we going to solve it? We're going to solve it next week with the concept of duality and the introduction of M theory. So see you next week and please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep these shows going. Like, share, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. You know what to do. You've been on YouTube for a long time and I will see you next week.